Good evening, everybody. I've been interested for a long time in digital technologies and digital literacies, and especially how people evolve with them over time and how they make use of them um, at home and in their personal time as well. Today, I'm going to share with you a very personal story, which is that of my father. My father is a university professor as well um, in Quebec, and he's been working on lifelong learning for his whole career, especially with Kofi Annan at the United Nations uh, about 20 years ago, and now he's still continuing that work. My father was born in the, during the World War II, and as a child, he was listening to the radio with his own father, um, specifically uh, the Christmas parades and the stories that were on the radio. And with his uncle, it was the baseball games more specifically if all of you can recall as well. Now, my father has seen a lot of technologies over time. So we're talking radio, we're talking the TV, black and white TV, color TV, we're talking vinyl, we're talking CDs, the, the beginning of the internet, the computers as well. And so when the beginning of the internet came, as a professor, he sent an email to his colleague who was in Quebec City, which is about two hours away. And so when he sent that email, this was dial up 1996. Uh, Mom, get off the phone, <laughs> right? Um, and so he called in Quebec to City to see if the email actually arrived there. <coughs> now we work in a digital world that is wireless. And so in 2015, for example, seniors over 65 in Canada really spent about four hours a day watching TV and about two hours a day using digital technology and computers, two hours a day listening to the radio, and another two hours a day on reading. Now in Nova Scotia, about one person on five is a senior, and that's about, in the HRM region, that's about 63,000 people. And so people live longer. And according to post piagetian theory and post-formal thought, that means that we have better problem-solving skills in senior population. And so a common example of that would be seeing the rewind button, for example, will be for more familiar for someone who's older than for a child, for instance, who sees that for the first time. And so there's ways to accompany our seniors with digital technologies. And one of these ways is not to do the work for them, is to do the work with them. It's to be patient and empathetic for their situation. Simple things, transactions at the bank, online transactions, for instance, via the internet, show them how. Now, the number one mode of communication among seniors is email. Okay, so we have to be very careful with some basic things like phishing email. Hell, I have to be careful with that as a university professor myself. So imagine having those kind of stress throughout life and having to deal with those situations. Now, another way that seniors uh, interact is through Facebook and Twitter, okay, in a more passive way to stay in contact with family members, for instance. And so, that there's that way, there's a way of gaming also that would benefit from a research in terms of intergenerational learning. So say for instance, a video game on World War II. So a grandchild would benefit from hearing grandfather, for instance, recalling their experiences on that era. And in turn, the grandparent could also learn about gaming and those types of situations. And so we adapt, we live longer, of course, but we have to be empathetic and listen as well. In 2017, the University of Arkansas has found that seniors, more specifically, 75% of them want to know more about the future of their own mobile devices, such as smartphones and tablets. Okay? A simple sh change and shift would be, for example, instead of watching the weather network and waiting for a beautiful forecast for Halifax to come up, would be just to show that on the app, there's a way to address and there's a way to go look for that information okay, as an alternative. And again, accompany the person through that process. 
Okay? We have to show the benefits of using digital technologies in mobile in different contexts. So not only the benefits, but also the affordances, and also alleviate the, anxi the anxiety that's often accompanied by that. Now, to, grab, to go back to my father, <laughs> he made the switch in 2013. He said, well, I'm not a Mac person. I'll never be a Mac person. I said, fine, let's test that out. So on his birthday, I offered him an iPad. And still to this day, we communicate twice a week via FaceTime. I showed him once how to use it, and he can do it all by himself. So having the negative stereotype that elders don't know how to use technology is a fallacy, really. So I keep close contact with him, and he's the person that showed me wisdom. And you can't have wisdom through digital technology. You have that with your elders and your seniors. And also, and as a final note, he still calls me to know if his email got through and if I checked my email. Thank you so much.